Hello guys, this is Abdullah here back with the long overdue short review of the ROG Gaming Mice GX1000. Now first of all, I'm going to begin with the things I missed in the initial unboxing video. This mouse mat, ROG mouse mat was included in the packaging. As you can see, for some reason, Asus decided to um, print the logo and the writing in all white and I did a bodged up job of painting part of it red with a marker well it kind of works and also you can see there's a big crease that goes along the middle of the mat the problem is the packaging was not as big as the mat itself I mean it will be impractical and they had to um, fold the mouse mat and which resulted in this crease if the mouse this mat has been there for two months but as you can see the crease is still there which is which is very annoying the thing is i'm not using this mouse mat as you can see i have limited space so i'm using a smaller mouse mat and that was still in the packaging and i just got it out for the sake of this video anyway let's crack on with the mouse itself well as you can see, this mouse is made with brushed aluminium top. The main two buttons are brushed aluminium with the white logo and Republic of Gamers writing in white. I'll get back to this later. Also, the back is brushed aluminium. The mid section where the side buttons are located is piano black. So is the other side. And the bottom half is matte plastic. In the bottom, we have five smooth teflon feet we have one on the end here i wish they included one at the top here too as you can see because one is missing from there uh, the, the matte plastic is going a bit shiny for scraping against the mouse mat but that's no biggie at the bottom here we have the weight module which clicks out and clicks in so if we just click it out and show you it's got five five grams weights attached to it I like my mice heavy, so I'm using all of them. That way it saves me from keeping them safe somewhere else. In the center, we have the sensor. And I, I like the way they've made a triangular shaped thing um, around the sensor, which kind of represents the ROG logo. And we've got a hardware button there. This is the hardware DPI button. We'll get back to this later. On the side, we have the three buttons, those two, are preset for forward and back on an um, Internet Explorer environment. The third button is not associated with anything, but that can be set to something like throwing a frag grenade or something in game. Anyway, on the top, we've got the scroll wheel, which is very sturdy and smooth at the same time. You can see the red LED shining through it, just like the rest of the mouse. We've got two LEDs at the back, one on the DPI switch. Now, a lot of people have beef with this DPI switch because, as you can see, there's only one switch. There is no DPI up or DPI down. When you're playing a game, the DPI only changes one way. So even though you have four DPI settings there, if you want to go from A to four, you're going to have to press it three times so one two and three so it's a bit problematic for people who use more than two DPI settings in one single game meaning if they're on the second one they want to get back to the first one again they're gonna have to press it three times now fiddling around while playing a game you will definitely die in game though it's a bit bit of a nuisance for some this is actually good for me now let me explain why in game i only use two different dpi settings one is medium speed and one is very fast now the fast one is for when i'm in a helicopter or in a boat using a turret and the lower speed one is when i'm on foot with a soldier now because there's four settings even number settings present on the mouse what i have done is i have set the first one for low speed then high low high then comes back to low again so what happens is, every time I want to make it slow, I just click it once. If I want to make it fast again, click it once, which takes it to a setting which is fast, then to the next one, which is also exactly the same as the first one. So it's alternating, So which is even better. I don't have to look for two different switches to go up and down. 
all I need to do is just click it once. Anyway, the software side of the mouse is like so. You can see, you can set different functions for the different settings here. And here are the four DPI settings that I mentioned. Now you will see, you can either change it by clicking here or you can click the hardware button on the mouse and it changes. Now I forgot to mention, this mouse saves all the settings only in the mouse itself. It doesn't change anything in the software. You can use the software to change the things in the mouse, but it gets saved in the mouse's memory. There is no part of this mouse's function that is saved on the software side. Meaning if I just take it off now and go somewhere else, the setting will still this still stay the same. Unlike some of the mice out there. And as I explained before, you can see the level one DPI is there. So is the third one. And the second one and fourth one is higher like so. Now let's get back to the um, hardware button that I showed before. At the bottom, you've got this hardware button which changes profile on the mouse. The thing is, a lot of people like their profile button to be on the side of the here. And the thing is, when I'm playing game, by mistake, if I press the um, profile button, it might go to a profile that is not associated with the game I'm playing. I only have one profile for each game. So before I play that game, I can just press this button and start playing. That's a good thing. Now, when I press the hardware profile change button here, you can see the LEDs in the back change color. It becomes weird because the rest of the mouse is red and this button becomes green. If you press it again, it becomes orange. Then it switches off. So you know which profile the mouse is on. Now the software you can see it's doing the same thing when I press the buttons, it's just changing there, which I could have changed with the mouse cursor itself. Now because I only use one type of game, which is a first person shooter, I always keep it in one profile and save everything on that one. And obviously I choose red because the mouse, everything else on the mouse, as well as the rest of my setup, as you can see, is red. So it goes very nicely with the theme. And let's see if I've missed anything. Uh, yeah, my only beef with the mouse is this white print on the button itself. It's brushed aluminium, then it's painted black. On top of that, you've got this writing, which is in white. Even though you cannot see, I mean, I cannot see myself anything coming off, but I guarantee you over time, the white print will come off. I mean, of all the places, why did Asus choose to print it there, right underneath your finger. This this is odd. It, it could have been here because I am not a um, palm grip guy, so they would have stayed for longer. This is, I mean, this is funny. Or at least they could have embossed it on the aluminium itself. They would have been a bit uncomfortable, but still the, the logo would have been there. I mean, they could have taken the Republic of Gamers writing completely out and put the logo itself just in the corner somewhere. Anyway, the cable is braided, like most other gaming mice. As you can see, I still haven't gotten uh, taken the table table tie out because I connected with my keyboard here. It's not going all the way back to the computer. But if you want to, you can. There's lots of cable left. That's about it, really. I hope you guide. I hope you guys liked the. Um, small review of the ROG Republic of Gamers GX1000 mouse. I hope you can decide whether you want to go for this mouse or not. But certainly, I this is the best mouse, mouse I've, I've used so far. Thanks for watching.